AM 1060 WMEL. The views expressed on the following program are those of the hosts, callers, and guests, and are not necessarily those of WMEL staff, management, or advertisers. This is Joe Stecker, folks, your host for Helping Seniors, the radio arm of Helping Seniors of Burrard County, Incorporated. Our purpose is to educate, inform, and connect seniors and those who care for seniors to resources they need to live with a little dignity and to age with dignity. The phone number for Kay Kaiser, our information specialist at the office, is 473-7770. Um, we guess the, the brand new issue of Senior Scene Magazine was on the, hit the street this morning, and already we were uh, sort of swamped with phone calls just because of what we had in Senior Scene Magazine. There is a need out there, folks, and uh, to help us uh, make people aware of the need, we have some wonderful sponsors that uh, that help us uh, put this radio show, our television shows, and all the printed media we have on the street to help people. Our sponsors include Kindred at Home, I Institute, Dr. Lee Sheldon, Bill Johnson, Elder Law Attorney, this radio station, WBLAM 1060, Wistoff Hospital System, Lennon, Levin Home Care, Atlantic Shores Rehabilitation, Ebony News Today, Wendy Handy of Dale Sorensen Real Estate, Riverview Senior Resort Area, and Organized Creative Designs. And that's all uh, I might mention it during the show because it's a, a lady, it's a nurse, and she helps people get organized and helps people downsize. And uh, she's getting a tr- starting to get a tremendous amount of business because one of the hardest things seniors have to do is give stuff up. You know, we want to hang on to stuff. And by hanging on to stuff, that precludes us from getting down to the type of living that we might need in order to take better care of ourselves. And that's where our panelist comes in today. My panelist today is Greg Kennedy from uh, Zahn Beachside Assisted Living. It's a brand new facility going up, folks, over on the beach side, and we're going to talk about that. And those of you that have gone to doubles for years to get get sandwiches and have a beer, um, this is right next door to doubles. And uh, the whole beach area is being transformed over there. And uh, what made it particularly intriguing to me is when uh, we when uh, Zahn called and said they want to be one of our sponsors was that Zahn becomes the first real major assisted living facility on the beach. Is that right, Greg? That's correct. We'll be the first primary assisted living on the on the beach side, so we're excited to bring that to the residents. And what is your back? How did you get involved in this in this stuff? So I've spent my career in, in healthcare operating facilities across the U.S. And uh, through a, an acquaintance, I uh, came to know the individual that, that owned the the previous hotel that sat on that site and he had a vision that he wanted to bring assisted living services to the beach side because he was aware of the need and so we partnered up and spent quite a bit of time developing Zahn Beachside and, and really tried to bring a different product to the beach side so we spent a lot of time. Well that's that. what we're going to talk about today but the thing I the first thing that came to my mind when I found out what was going on over there was what's going to happen to all the kayakers <laughs> <laughs> they come down here, and the and the, uh, and the uh, eight oared crews that come down for training on the uh, on the uh, Grand Canal. Wonder where they'll go. They're all running around us. I see them every day. They're <laughs> running around the block, but they, they're still coming down. Oh yeah, there's a lot of them down right now. So oh my gosh, yeah. I, and for years, I've, I I rode crew at the Naval Academy. And it's a it's an intriguing sport. Uh, I was a stroke oar, and that's a that's a grueling thing. We used to row eight miles on a Saturday afternoon on the Severn River. And uh, I remember one time we uh, we were rowing and a storm came up and we gradually sank. And uh, <laughs> but we got we got we got to the shore where we could put the put the shell up on our shoulders and get it back overland. <laughs> those things cost a lot of money. A lot of people don't realize that those those eight oared racing shells. The uh, top of the line models cost thousands and thousands of dollars. Do they really? Yeah, yeah. They're 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 a very precise thing. But let's get back. Yeah, the people we want to talk about, sir, are not going to go out and row <laughs> and and uh, 
in uh, eight or, or even the single ord shells anymore. And we're looking for the type of living. And really, what is the mission of Zahn? Our mission and vision really from day one was to to not only bring a product to the beachside and with a great location, but really to create a different product and bring that to beachside that we just felt you know, over the years that you know assisted living um, really wasn't bringing much new innovation recently and so our goal was really to to bring you know a great product but really to bring a, a new product to market that you know, we could be proud of and in the residents and on the beach side and in the whole melbourne area could really benefit from a different product when you talk about a different product and we're going to get into that because uh greg explained some things to me folks that uh Quite honestly, I had not heard about. I understand what he's talking about, but I, I did not know that uh, there were there were there were these types of innovations in the assisted living uh, facility business. How did, how did you all plan? Was this something you knew about, or the other, the owner knew, knew about, Greg? It's really something I always try to keep a pulse on of the industry, and there's a lot of innovation occurring out there. It's just a matter of really getting it into the the assisted living environment and and make it useful. Um, I think there's a difference between bringing something that uh, enhances what we can already do as opposed to making it more difficult, and that was really our goal is what out there can really enhance what our staff and are doing for our residents and not um, making it more cumbersome. So we really looked at um, some really exciting things, and I think you know what we're bringing is some of that technology that really is going to enhance our staff's ability to create a different experience for our residents. Most people, when you think of assisted living, they think about um, having a uh, an overstuffed chair or a, a recliner chair, uh, a sofa, a television, uh, maybe, a, maybe a dinette type thing. Uh, if you want to salvage or something yourself, you don't want to go into the dining room. But uh, just from what I've gleaned from the documentation that you sent me, that Zahn is completely different from uh, from what uh, we might think of as average assisted living. That, uh, and I, I I really want to go into the nitty gritties and the specifics of what makes Zahn different from the average assisted living. And since you're the guy that's going to run it. I'll ask you to start it off, and I'll listen to what you're saying, and then I'll, add, I'll commit it, and I'll ask some questions. Sounds great. So the physical plant, I think, was the first thing you obviously you look at, and we really tried to create an environment that was not only encompassing of what seniors are looking for, but also convenience and safety and all of those other factors. And so we really uh, looked at, you know, we had the – obviously the luxury of building a facility. And so we wanted to create the facility from day one of really in the ideal situation, what, what would it look like? And so we spent a, a considerable amount of time in, in how to create that facility from the moment you walk in to create a, a really inviting uh, upscale with, you know, bright kind of warm colors um, and also a, a modern feel that then flows throughout that facility into multiple common spaces, um, including our captain's table, which is our, our dining. We have a compass pub that will have a daily happy hour. And then there's multiple smaller areas, including a horizons cafe where we'll have, you know, smaller, uh, pastries and muffins and a, a coffee bar. So a lot of different, environments that our residents can enjoy in addition to their apartment you know how can they interact with their environment and really make it it easy for them to to navigate the facility and so we it's a two-story um, environment and it also is very convenient there's no considerable distances for our residents to to navigate through the facility i also understand that you've uh, acquired some additional uh properties that you'll have at an extremely nice parking area so the people that do maintain their cars have a good safe place to park the cars it is it's something that some people don't consider when they build a facility and if um you know families or if you've ever visited a facility and there's nothing more frustrating than trying to find a parking spot so we uh, actually purchased some additional land right on that property to create 
a considerable amount of parking, more than we even need, but it'll be very convenient. And we have multiple entrances, convenient for families to pull up and park, convenient for the residents who still drive to be able to park their cars, convenient to their apartment so they can they don't have to, again, walk those considerable distances to uh, reach well, the cars. Will, you, will they have access to the water also there? We have the Oars and Paddles Park right next uh, across the street from us where the kayakers you kind of mentioned where they uh, train so there's some great space right there that the residents can go over and there's some nice sheltered areas um, but we're also going to have complimentary transportation so we really want to utilize all those great benefits gleason park yes we have the the ocean you know just a couple minutes from us we really envision using all those spaces and really getting out into the community which is why we're real excited about where we're situ- or where we're located, um, and the residents can kind of navigate. We've got some great um, walking spaces right next to our property where the residents can easily go out and walk through the community. Well, that is, and and in that location, it's uh, I think it's really a, a benefit to have access to safe walking spots in the park areas. There, as you did talk about Gleason Park and some of the other local areas that are not far at all. Most definitely, and it. You know, that's a great benefit of Indian Harbor Beach and the whole beach side is just that safety and security that is important, that you want uh, that local community feel. Obviously, the police and fire are very active in the community, so it's a great environment for, okay. for seniors. You, uh, you're going to have well, – you, when you talk about – so many of the facilities have – they have what they call open dining rooms. They have closed dining rooms. They have uh, meal hours. They have uh, – uh, but from what you're saying, I'm sensing that you've got open dining. Or is there, will it be, can residents eat at any time they want or, or Most schedule definitely. meals? So we have what's called our Zone 360 program, which really has six key areas that we developed that in you know, my years of experience at healthcare, really, we, these six areas are what are important for a resident and their family when they move in. And one of those, which is on fresh, which is our dining experience. And we really, um, again, from day one, wanted to create a different experience for our residents. So we've, um, we have open dining times. So there's not um, necessarily residents don't have to come at a specific time. So they, there's open dining in, in the morning, open dining in the afternoons and the evenings. But then also we have a true 24 seven available menu. So if, if someone doesn't want to dine in the evening, they can dine at 10 o'clock at night or 2 in the morning, and there's always a an available menu for them to, to order from at any time. And uh, What are your plans on keeping people from getting strictly or, sur- or superbly overweight by that kind of dining? <laughs> I, it, well, it is something to consider, Greg, really. It most definitely is. And I think um, one of the things we're going to be offering is what's called the Mind Diet. It's a... It's really interesting. I encourage your listeners to to go out and and really research it. But we'll be offering the Mind Diet as an option for our residents. Um, and it, it was developed at the Rush University, and it's a combination of some Mediterranean diets that has it's fairly easy to follow, which is a great benefit to it. But the the research is phenomenal, and not only the cardiovascular and the benefits to that, and you know potential weight maintenance, but the potential to reduce the likelihood of Alzheimer's is tremendous. The study out of Rush University, and it was funded by the National Institute on Aging, um, so it was a very impartial study, and it found people that followed this diet saw sometimes almost a 53% reduction in at the onset of Alzheimer's by following the this diet. So we've, we're going to be incorporating that as an option for our residents. So every meal in addition to the restaurant-style dining and all the other options, they will also have the mind diet option and it just uh, the benefits are are tremendous, so we're excited about. You mentioned a wellness area. The uh, as I get older myself, I, I I know the value of exercise, and exercise as you get older becomes increasingly more difficult uh, with the loss of balance and with the loss of uh, agility. It's not as easy to exercise uh, in your 80s as it was in your 70s and 60s. So, therefore, you have a propensity to start gaining weight. And when you start gaining weight, it's very difficult to stop that. What kind of uh, 
do you have a physical fitness trainer or do you have a nursing staff that's going to whether the people they have a right to eat whatever they want to but uh, under the, your mind diet thing is there something that where people will, will get counseling if they if you all the staff think they need it yes we're going to have a wellness center on site so there'll be options for um, activities that they can do independently if they just wanted to come down and exercise and engage in the wellness center but also we'll have medicare b therapy on site also so if they ever have a need for any type of therapy services to improve their balance, mobility, anything related to you know, physical or occupational needs, that will also be on, available on site through Medicare B. But the wellness center will have the equipment available to them whenever they um, have a need or desire to, to come down. We'll have a therapist on site that will be able to assist them with that. So in addition to the nursing staff, there will also be a, a physical therapy component on site to assist them and develop plans around you the have you ever run a facility like this before greg yes Been okay these for- so that if i said to you that since you've run a facility and i've run a facility and i took care of 550 people and i knew every single one of them and i knew i like to t- pride myself on thinking i knew what their needs might be i sense that you're the type of person that's going to make his business to know all the residents that are there. And by bringing some force like that to an assisted living facility, you raise an entirely different level of care there. Most definitely. And I you think believe it, that? Absolutely. I mean, it starts with starts with that relationship. It starts and with that doggone administrator in the front office is exactly where it starts, exactly. Greg. If you don't pay attention to what's happening, if you don't know your residents, then nobody else is going to know. And it just makes all the difference in the world. And, and quite frankly, that was why I, it was, I got excited myself when I found out the place was being constructed. And then when I talked to you and you sent me some of these questions. And uh, I want to I wanna talk about what you call Zon 360. You mentioned there are six areas to that, right? Correct. Exactly. You've talked about the food area a little bit. Uh, what is another component of your 360 system that you think makes Zon different from other assisted living facilities? And, I, 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 and since you've already done this, you know that you're going to have to be continually on top of what your awareness awareness of what your residents are doing, because that's the only way you make your system work. Am I correct? Correct, or? most definitely. Okay, and that's really how we developed that Zon 360 program is is taking you know years of experience and what is really important for our residents, and that's where we have these six foundations. The Zon Fresh we kind of mentioned and talked about a little right. bit. The Zon Health is the next component, and that really is, it's all exciting. But that's a, an area that I find real exciting. I, I just can't wait to implement the the technology that we're bringing in related to Zon Health. Uh, we're going to be one of the first facilities in the across the country, really, to bring this technology to assisted livings, and it's it's called passive health monitoring. So in addition to the, the wellness that I talked about, and, you know, the goal, you know, seniors suffer so much from falls and the risks and the you know, potential for serious injuries. So as opposed to dealing with you know, the, the reactive, it's really trying to be proactive. What can we do to prevent a fall as opposed to reacting to a fall? And that's where the passive health monitoring technology comes into. So it's, if you can imagine in someone's apartment, it has different sensors that are passively watching that or monitoring their resident's health behavior. The residents don't have to wear anything. In fact, they don't even really notice that there is a technology that's monitoring their health behavior. But all of these sensors are then collecting data that um, is correlated and sends immediate alerts back to the nursing staff. And the uh, research has really shown that they can proactively address things sometimes days prior to what we would consider now acceptable time frames for picking up on some things such simple things like urinary tract infections that 
many times you wait for the signs and symptoms to show up in the resident, this system allows us to proactively pick up on symptoms. Can you explain to our listeners how that works, Greg? I, I understand what you're because you've told me, but they don't understand it. And hearing you say it is one thing, but they, they need help them understand sure. exactly what you're talking about. So if we take one example, a urinary tract infection, uh, there's symptoms that show up increased bathroom usage potentially prior to eventually a, a spike in their temperature and then addressing that that sometimes requires them to then go to the hospital. The goal with the system is to pick up on those behavioral changes being the increased bathroom usage um, and this system allows us to do that. So it actually monitors the frequency and the length of time that the resident uses the bathroom. And so if changes occur, if they have a pattern that they use it on a, a specific time frame, but all of a sudden that changes, the system will actually pick up on that and then alert the nursing staff to address potentially a concern. And so that's that's just one example. There's a multitude of things that's monitoring. It monitors their sleeping patterns, when they wake up, when they go to bed, how well they slept. But how does it how does the system in the room how does that how does that make a nurse aware of when a person is going to sleep or when a person wakes up? How does that work? So we have a – it's a combination of sensors. So there's three different types of sensors that are installed in the upper corners of their room, or their apartment, and it's motion sensors. There is a pressure sensor that goes – got to take our – Oh, sure. Stay with that. We're going to take a mid-show break, folks. But do come back and stay with us because when we come back, Greg is going to explain how these three sensors work to do what – he says they can do it. And I think it's extremely interesting. And those of you thinking about moving someplace, you might want to think about what Greg's talking about. Stay with us. Chosen Business of the Month by the Cocoa Beach Regional Chamber of Commerce. This is AM 1060 WMEL. This is Joe Stecker, folks. We're like live for the second half of Helping Seniors. I want to mention our seniors for the second part, our sponsors for the second part of the show, and they include uh, Senior Scene Magazine and a brand new issue hit the street this morning, folks. So if you get to your drop up point, um, there are 15,000 of those sitting out there waiting for you to pick them up. And it's got our eight page newsletter inserted in there, and you'll see it with the yellow page, the yellow lining around the edge of the pages. That's the newsletter for the uh, helping seniors. That's, an, that's, that's how we get our newsletter out. Uh, we also have sponsors include Hometown News, Spotlight Magazine, Seniors Helping Seniors, the Fountains of Melbourne, Courtney and Brazel Financial Planning Team, Barbara McIntyre, Home Equity Specialist, Canadian Meds of Melbourne, Ear Care, Vitas Hospice, Handy Pro, the Space Coast, and Aldia Today, the uh, Spanish newspaper, and I've got my first feature column in there, and the issue will come out the 1st of May. Uh, we've been asked to uh, contribute on a monthly basis to Aldea Magazine. So now we have access to uh, the major markets in Burrard County through Hometown News, 200,000 distribution, uh, the black community through uh, Ebony News Today, the Spanish community through Aldea, and then we have a senior scene, the Spotlight Magazines, along with all the television shows. And our advocacy council will be meeting in, uh, in an, another week, I think it is, and the thrust of our meeting will be to focus on making the Space Coast Government Channel an elder-friendly community channel for people on the Space Coast. In other words, we will try to draw more sponsors, more people taking care of seniors onto the television network so that we can get them to tell their story to you visually so you can see what they're doing, how they can help you, and why you should be watching what we're asking you to do via the radio and printed means. It's all important to you. It's all about helping you. Now, let's get back to Greg from Zon Beachside Assisted Living. Uh, Greg Kennedy is the uh, administrator there, and he was talking about uh, part of their Zon 360 system. Greg, go ahead and finish that discussion because there's much more we need to talk about. Sure. So the passive health monitor that I was talking about uh, before the break is – it goes beyond just identifying health concerns, but the the big concern that I kind of alluded to, which is the falls, that really is what I believe is could potentially revolutionize this industry. Not I'm just- interested in that, Greg, because uh, most senior citizens have a balance problem. They have a uh, 
the your muscles just tighten up. You're not as you're not as active. You don't move as easily as you did before, and you are prone to falls. And I'm always advocating use of a rollator and canes. But what does your system do, and how does that detect falls or or, or the fact that somebody might fall, I think it's really interesting. So one of the sensors is a depth sensor. So it learns in individuals not only their body shape, but also learns their gait pattern or how they walk. So it picks up on subtle changes. So the if a senior has a change in their gait or walk pattern, the system will actually send alerts to the nursing staff to identify that, as opposed to the traditional current method is, unfortunately, sometimes a senior falls, and then that change is picked up on and then we institute therapy the goal with this system is to pick up on those walking pattern changes before they fall get them into therapy and strengthen and make that change the if a fall unfortunately would occur the system also has the significant advantage that it does immediately alert all the staff so a challenge in in any healthcare setting from hospitals to nursing homes to assisted livings is if someone falls they may lay there sometimes a while before a staff member finds them Uh, with this system it will immediately alert the staff so the staff all will carry android devices little telephones and it would send an alert to those phones immediately so everyone would be notified and get in there and assist that resident uh, and then look at uh, interventions to prevent those any future falls it's real exciting technology what makes it exciting to me greg is that uh, everything folks that greg is talking about is something that's already built into the room. You don't pay extra for it as part of the uh, as part of the system, as part of this Zon 360 system, Greg. Right? Exactly. We decided that we just felt there was such a huge benefit to the system that we we wanted to make sure it was included as part of the package. We didn't want uh, families to feel like they had to pay additional for a benefit, and so we've included that as part of our our package. Okay, what are what are a couple of the other parts? What are the other two? I think there's still two parts to the Zon 360 I haven't talked about. So the, we have also Zon Life and Zon Culture. And the difference with Zon Life is really creating a purpose-driven life enrichment program. And what I mean by that is uh, many times we feel like we give seniors busy activities is what I refer to them as. And the goal with Zon is to create purpose-driven, meaning we all have a reason we get up in the morning and in whether we go to work or volunteer, whatever we do. And just because someone ages and may be in assisted living doesn't mean they shouldn't have a purpose anymore in what they do every day. And so our goal with Zon Life is to give that purpose back to that resident and bringing in volunteer opportunities within the community, um, bringing in purpose-driven um, you know, mind stimulation, uh, physical activities, spiritual. So having the life enrichment really has a purpose behind them as opposed to just, again, kind of keeping the seniors busy. And, and it gives them a reason to get up each morning. Well, I think part of that, uh, if, I, if I'm wrong, correct me, uh, you will have transportation. And one of the things you said to me that, like, if somebody had tickets to uh, the King Center, to the performances at the King Center, that your transportation would take them and pick them up and bring them, and they wouldn't have to drive themselves. Exactly. We're going to have complimentary transportation, whether it be for outings like the King Center or the you know multiple opportunities with parks, but also doctor's appointments, uh, family outings, whatever those are. So we'll have transportation always available to get our residents out into the community. And an interesting thing is I asked uh, Greg the cost of, of uh, Azan, and his prices are, are, are readily competitive with, with the current prices. Exactly. We're uh, very competitive within the market. But you offer more than I, – I, 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 I'm, I'm going to say it. You offer more than the average assisted living facility offers. And if I get my head taken off for that, I have to get it taken off because one of the things we're going to have to face, Greg, as we have larger numbers of boomers hitting the, the, the care market – we're going to have to be smarter in how we take care of these people, and we're going to have to be smarter in how we prevent current problems from happening. We're going to need more places that have an atmosphere like you're trying to do at Zon, so that other the other parts of the care community are going to have to start catching up. We've been complacent too long. Most definitely. I think the, the industry as a whole has, like you said, been fairly complacent and not much innovation 
And that's really our goal was from day one is how can we change the what we're delivering to the resident and you know, as a boomer's age the expectations are going to change and we want to we want to be on the forefront of that change and, and really giving a different product to them could you explain to our listening audience your licensure and what what exactly will will you be able to do what levels of care will you provide so our um, plan is to we'll have a there's multiple levels of licenses in Florida and that's probably one of the biggest misconceptions families have when they begin touring assisted livings is they feel like all facilities are the same um, but there's actually four levels of of licenses at an assisted living so I always encourage families that should really be your first question you ask when you go into an assisted living is what type of license do you have um, in each license allows someone to provide different levels of care. Our goal from day one was to allow our residents to age in place gracefully. And to do that, uh, we're going to be applying for what's called an ex, uh, extended congregate care license. And that allows our residents to age in place. And we can truly provide total care, whatever that that is for the residents, without requiring them to ever transition to another level of care. And that's important because some other levels of licenses actually would require a resident potentially down the road to have to move to a another level of care, whether that be skilled nursing, hospital, whatever the case is. And families many times don't think about that upon admission, but they, they think about that down the road, sometimes years down the road, when all of a sudden something unfortunate happens and now they're faced with, how do I handle this change? And does my mother or father now have to move to another place after they you know, they know the staff, they know the facility, and they've it's become their home, we don't want that to ever have to change for the residents. So um, we'll have all of our apartments licensed under that license so they don't even have to move within the facility. They will stay in their apartment the entire stay throughout, and, and we'll be able to provide those services. Um, and it includes many things, you know, 24-hour nursing care, some advanced care planning, things to make sure that our residents are getting their nursing care they needs, not just the, their social needs, but also their nursing needs met. Are you saying that you can provide nursing home type care in Zon? We can provide services under the, the ECC. There is definitely some skilled nursing type needs that only skilled nursing homes provide. Okay. But the assistance with what are called activities of daily living are those all those things we do, walk, eat, Although those things, uh, our goal is really be able to provide those services to our residents, no matter what their needs are, from independent all the way to total assistance. And that's really the difference with an ECC license compared to the other licenses being like a standard license in a in a, an assisted living facility. Um, they can't do some simple uh, nursing type care needs in an ECC. But you will be able to do that. Most definitely. How about, let's say... Um Will you have be able to provide this type of services? Let's say a kindred at home right now is a form of the old Gentiva home health care system program, the largest in the United States. They do all kinds of, of, of skilled nursing. They could do, um, um, I'm not sure if they could do tube feeding in the home if a tube was placed or not, but I think they could. Um, would you be able to do that kind of thing as on? Yes, and we will still partner with home health companies um, to supplement, but the goal is really, you know, sometimes home health companies aren't always immediately available. So we want to be able to provide those services whenever the resident needs them and not have to rely on potentially a home health company to to come in. And, and that may take a, an hour or several hours sometimes, depending on the time of the day or holiday. So with the ECC license, we can provide all those services, but still you know, work in conjunction with um, home health companies and therapy companies. Okay, a question often comes up then about the ability to pay. Um, let's say um, under Medicare, Medicare will pay for uh, all the skilled nursing services that could could possibly be given in a nursing home. Or would it, could would that same kind of care be available at Zon? Medicare only pays in an assisted living facility for therapy services under Medicare B, so you can't use your Medicare A benefit like you can in a skilled nursing facility at an assisted living facility. Um, so therapy is the only thing that Medicare would pay for. But there's some other avenues to really investigate that many people don't know about, and a big one of that is 
the aid and attendance benefit available through the VA. Right. And that's something you know, many people, most people walk in um, when they are looking at Zon Beach side and they don't even know about the VA and the aid and attendance benefit. And so. So you all have already investigated the ability to incorporate a VA aid and attendance benefit into your assisted living cost? Yes, so we always really encourage families always to to go and apply for that benefit whenever possible, and we have some resources to help them apply if they need that assistance. But it's such a great benefit; it's it's a shame not to utilize. I should have brought a pad and paper and started making some questions up to see if I could trip you up on something. <laughs> you, you, I, I quite frankly, uh, and and there's a fellow in the studio with Steve Kusick with us in the studio, and he's shaking, nodding his head because. Um, the questions that I've asked Greg are, are quite frankly, folks, are very in-depth questions that uh, that uh, you would normally ask somebody in an assisted living facility. I ask those kind of questions when I get uh, people from Kindred at Home on a radio show, and we talk about the skilled nursing services that can be provide, per, be provided under Medicare, which is, they can do almost every, anything that a nursing home can do. In fact, they, skilled nursing care can go into a nursing home and provide care there. So I'm, 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 I'm sorry, I'm not, have you all looked into the, under your licensure whether or not skilled nursing care could co- still come in and do some of the benefits? Within the assisted living facility? Yeah. Yeah, there definitely are some things that are very similar with an ECC license okay. and right. skilled nursing. So many of the, what you would consider 10, 15 years ago, a s- service that was only provided in skilled nursing now can be provided within the assisted living. So it's it's definitely changed. Okay, now would, that, would there be an additional cost for that uh, under your facility way people are paying for the room, Greg? Or is that included? No, that's all included in their their cost of care. So that's part it's a of bargain. the... That's a bargain, and you don't you don't have to put a hundred thousand dollars down to buy into it, do you? No, we're not a buy-in community. We're just a month to month. A month to month, doing all the stuff that you're doing, folks. Those of you that are contemplating, thinking about assisted living, I I highly encourage you to give. Them, we we got we got six minutes left, but give the phone number because I think. You know there are people there are people listening to us today because this is an interesting show. This is this is the type of show that puts out information that's different from what people are accustomed to hearing, Greg. And they need to find out. They need to investigate it. And before, I'll, make sure you get the, the telephone up before the end of the show. But in the remaining time, we got to, I asked Greg a question, folks, because uh, the subject of uh, memory care and. Uh, and adult day health care, especially beachside, is something that's extremely important to me and it's something I've been involved with for years, as many of you know. Uh, Greg, please tell our listening off is some of the things that you're thinking about doing beachside, satellite beach area that have never been offered in that area before. Yeah, and we found since we've been in this community that there's such a need for, you know, respite services. Um, for those people that are listening that are caring for a loved one, you know, sometimes just that four-hour break can be a considerable you know, plus in their life. So we're going to be providing those that type of four-hour, eight-hour, you know, whatever that need is. Um, it can be routine or it can be a one-time service. And so we're excited to bring that as a, you know, a service that someone doesn't always have to move into an assisted living facility. There's actually a benefit is on beachside within the community just for someone that wants to stay at home and and we also want to work with that family too to just give that caregiver a break and um, you know unless you've been a caregiver 24 hours a day and appreciate how difficult it is you know, that that four hour break can can be life changing for the caregiver and so we've heard that numerous times since we've been in in the beachside community that you know, are you going to provide some type of respite day service? I could really use that. I'm not quite ready for assisted living, but I could really use a break. And so we'll be also be providing that for the area community also. Well, based on my own personal experience, I know there is a, a very 
large need for that type of service to be offered uh, beachside right now because it precludes having to drive and cross the Pineda and go over on the mainland to get the care or have somebody come pick your person up. You, you can drive a person there very easily. Uh, one question I didn't think to ask you, are you going to have bus service for your, for that type of thing too or are you going to, is it going to be like people drive their people and pick them up? Typically, they would drive and pick them up. Okay. That they, makes sense. That makes sense. And you're going to have four and eight-hour increments? Correct. We also will do respite service. So if someone needs to go on vacation for a week or a few days, we can also accommodate short respite care. But if someone just needs to do four eight-hour increments, we can also handle that, whether it's routine, like I said, or just a one-time. Now, let's say if somebody wanted was, had to go, wanted to go uh, on a cruise, and it's not a good idea to take a, 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 a patient, a dementia patient, on a cruise. It's just not a good idea. You take them out of their element, and it confuses them. So, if they want to do, uh, would you have make be able to make provisions to say take care of somebody for five days, twenty four hours a day? Most definitely. So we'll have the the respite services. So we just work with that family before they leave just to make sure that everything's coordinated and we have everything we need to to meet their needs. Um, And because we have both memory care and assisted living, we can really handle, um, you know, the the needs within the community. Okay, we've got two minutes left. What kind of rooms do you offer over there? We'll have both um, studio and one-bedroom options. So we have a couple studio options, and we also have a couple one-bedroom options. Um, We have sold out of one of our one-bedroom options, and we're getting a little limited on a few others. So, you know, if someone's interested, I'd encourage um, someone to just come and look at the options. But You're starting to get sold out on certain things already? We are. Uh, and one of our one-bedroom options, we are sold out. And um, we've got some, you know, it's really important to pick the, the view and the, you know, the location of you know, proximity to certain amenities. So it's really important when you're looking at that. It's not just within the facility, but where does your loved one want to be within the facility? And so we're taking right, uh, reservations right now so people can choose that apartment and reserve their apartment. And then they have that first ready refusal once we open to to be able to move in and, and be exactly where they want to be within the community. And Okay, we're down to one minute. If a person wanted to get a beer, would they be able to get a beer in the assist, in the assisted living facility, or would they have to go next door to Doubles, or can they keep beer in their room? All of the above. <laughs> All of the above? <laughs> We're going to have a daily happy hour every day before dinner, so we'll be have a beer and wine every day uh, prior to dinner, and then we have that great convenience next to Doubles, so we... If someone wants to just go over and uh, have a beer or wine or listen to some live music, there's that great benefit built in. So. Is, it, is it a daily happy hour? Is that included in the room? It sure is. Folks, I'll tell you, if you got a question, call Greg. What's the phone number, Greg? 321-777-8840. You can go to zonbeachside.com. Call Greg. We're out of time, folks. Greg, I want to tell you, I have thoroughly, thoroughly enjoy doing this show, and I hope you – our listeners have enjoyed listening to what Greg has to say because Zahn offers some different things. So give him a call. Let him know that you're listening to us. Thank you, and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.